All right, I gotta get this, and then I gotta put that there. Get ready to do that. Hey, Sin. Yo, what's good, bro? Hey, what you up to, man? Oh, uh, man, I'm just getting some shit together, you feel me? Uh, You know, this week I got like three hood reviews I'm dropping, the Baki joint, then the Naruto joint, then the Hunter Hunter joint, so, you know, I'm just trying to get shit ready. Oh, that's, that's well, that's pretty cool, man. I mean, I mean, have you decided to just keep doing this hood review thing? Yeah, bro, I'm gonna just keep doing it, you know? I, I think they really like it, so I'm gonna keep doing it. I'm just trying to get things ready. Well, uh, by the way, I want you to hear something real quick. Oh, well, sure. Well, what do you want me to listen to? Well, I, I got this, like, thing I want to start doing where I do, like, uh, uh, just listen, just listen. So basically, man, I want to do this thing where, like, in the beginning of the videos, I, you know. Hey, fuck all that, man. You know what the fuck going on, man? Hey, Big Sensei, man. Sensei Productions, man. Yo, it wouldn't be a hood review without a rap, right? Oh, my God, man. I'm about to go crazy, man. What I tell them, hey? Hey, it's a lot of hands in this shit. I got hands, too. Me and Baki chilling. We was moving with the damn crew. He was telling me about this polar bear's dad beat. Man, I wish a bear would like some bamboo. This a fucking hood review. Gotta act the damn fool and if you Jiro want a piece gotta let that man through every enemy ran through understand he raised you but understand i raised to a fucking glock niggas acting tough but they fucking not bunch of soft prisoners acting like they from the block till baki hit the fucking spot i break it down in such a sister who review was fucking it and if you watch this video and don't subscribe then you a bitch man you know what the fuck going on nigga watch my video and you don't subscribe you a bitch nigga hey grab the strap grab the strap Yo, I have never watched the an anime and really been like, yo, I need everybody, anyone, and they mother to go watch this, bro. Yo, Baki is crazy. And today, I'm not going to cap to y'all, bro. I'm about to sit through the entire first season, and I ain't breaking it down in no crazy details, but I'm about to really go through this first season of this Netflix Baki series and tell you guys exactly why the f you need to watch it. Because if you don't watch Baki... I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. You're a bitch. Watch Baki, bro. The hands, the feet, everything in this show is immaculate. This be a teenage ass kid beating the hell out of anybody that he comes in contact with. And don't think he wins every fight. Cause no, 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 no. There are people in this show like <clears throat> Yujiro Hanma and that nigga's a demon. And we're gonna talk about him, but there are people in this show that have literally beat the dog shit out of the main character. Baki is insane. So off the rip in the first episode, bro, everybody's in the classroom having a fucking panic attack. There's this kid in the back that's slobbering a little bit. Prerequisite to this, Baki the Grappler is the original series for this. If you haven't peeped it, you should. But I'm going through this one because this is the one that most people are going to watch nowadays. It's on Netflix. It's easily available to everybody. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, this kid's sitting in the back of the classroom all drooling, messed up. Face looked like, yo, I'm not going to lie. His face looked like a mad roast beef sandwich. Like somebody just been tenderizing his shit. Pause. Pause. And everybody's freaking out. And this kid's just sitting in the back like just chilling. Goes outside. Some like pseudo bullies try to talk to him and of course bro his just presence alone makes these niggas shit on himself they don't want no smoke with him so this bald dwarf nigga later on comes through and he gas baki to come in because apparently there's gonna be like some strong fighters or some bull crap everybody in this show they like really really value fighting like over everything and it's like this like secret underground organization type beat Anyways, Midget Mr. Clean's in here talking to Baki about these like strong fighters. And he talks about these men with great power. And this is when we first meet these crazy ass inmates. And bro, I'm not going to lie to you, bro. The way that these people have escaped these organizations, these jails, these prisons is insane. So there's this first guy that we see. Old as shit, white beard. Yo, not white beard from One Piece, but this white bearded guy, super buff dude. They got him in a straight jacket. So they take him and they're about to hang him, right? Like really hang the dude. I'm like, yo, they still hang people? Like, what is this, bro? The 1800s? Like, what the fuck? So they go to hang this guy and like, he's like doing the whole thing, feet dangling and stuff this is a really gruesome show by the way just letting y'all know but anyways feet dangling you think he's dead so they gotta wait 10 minutes after this to make sure he's really dead right bro this dude when they come back it's still alive this man done survived being hung literally gets off of the rope and he kicks these niggas heads clean open bro 
It looks like he stepped on a pepperoni hot pocket when he kicked him in the head, bro. I'm talking blood, eyes all out. It was nasty hanging off the side. And then this dude goes and he swims the entire ocean. Bro was built different. Like, I'm already thinking to myself, like, yo, if I was to ever come across this type of nigga, I am going straight to the fucking Glock. And I don't even think that's gonna work. This dude survived being hung. If I shoot him, the bullet might hit me, bro. I don't know. So then we go on to this red haired guy, bro. He's sitting in the like electric chair. He's about to get electrocuted. And after the first thing that I saw from the old buff white guy, I'm like, yo, this whole thing ain't gonna work, bro. This is not gonna kill this guy. So they go to walk up to this dude. He got stuff hanging out of his mouth, the foam and all that nasty looking like Beethoven and all that. Yo, they go to go touch him. You see this flash of light, bro teleports behind two dudes grabs their head like yo oh, guys didn't you hear the alarm cracks they shit together bro it's like he was making an omelet bro real life cracked both they motherfucking yokes bro then you're in front of him pull the strap out he shoot bro he missed he punches the glock through bro's hand and then breaks his entire face open bro i'm not gonna lie bro's face looks so nasty bro it looked like somebody took a pile of clay and smacked it with a padlock like it was disgusting now the next one isn't as cool but it's still crazy so this dude is like leagues under the sea in a submarine basically big bald nasty head ass dude bro and he's built mad funny everybody in baki's built funny by the way i'm just letting y'all know that be prepared for that so he's leagues under the sea and how he ends up escaping is just swimming through the ocean bro like they're like he can't do it he'd have to hold his breath for five minutes that's insane bro did that easy came up punished everybody easy next guy is in this big ass cube and he's in there drawing and stuff he on his picasso tip and i'm not going cap like i'm thinking there's no way he's getting out of this right wrong this dude puts his hand on this unbreakable glass and like makes a suction cup somehow breaks it comes out of the glass and then bro tells bro the craziest secret of his life as he blows so much pressure into his ear that he pops his entire eardrum bro every one of these inmates really are crazy and that is literally just the first episode so the next thing we see in this next episode i'm gonna fast forward all the bullshit we get to this yard and all of these gangsters is here talking crazy and of course, they're talking crazy to my man, Baki. There's a dude with a switchblade. He's like, where's Baki at? And then we see the big tall dude. Remember the ball guy I was telling you about? The one that swam through the ocean? Bro, he takes the dude's burner, puts it into his cheek, and unloads a clip. Bro, he shoots through his whole jaw, and nothing happens, bro. So the ball guy's looking for Baki, because he's like, you're the strongest man in Tokyo, I hear. So he walks up to Baki, he tries to give him a handshake. Baki grabs his arm, bro's hand comes off. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Bro, I'm like, yo, what is this, a prop hand? Like, But then I seen blood there, so I was like, yo, I don't know what's going on with bro, but he got detachable limbs and all that. Then he kicks this nigga Baki straight in his chest. Bro, he kicks these shits out of Baki, bro. Like, I'm watching this happen, and I'm like, relax. Bro, it looked like he had a blaster coming out of his leg. Like, bro, what are you, Mega Man, bro? You Astro Boy, bro? Like, he kicks the fuck out of Baki. Then he's got his hand on his Baki's fucking face. The fake hand, why he's stepping on his head? Then he just smiles like nothing happens, bro. He's so weird. So I'm thinking it's over at this point, right? Then in the next scene, though, we see the ogre himself, the immaculate, disgustingly built Yujiro Hanma doing some sort of Pilates stretch, getting his groin already while smoking a cigarette. Then he pops up all dainty like, bro, in a Speedo. Bro, what are you, a Playboy model? Like, what are, we, what are we doing? Then in some sort of like act of like, oh, look at me, I'm super cool. He flicks his cigarette and instead of just putting it in an ashtray, he does a fucking front flip heel kick to put the cigarette out. Like, bro is mad extra. But basically, they call him an ogre, though, and they say, like, his back muscles look like a demon face. Like, bro, it, it, he's built different, bro. That's all y'all need to know. The rest of this episode doesn't really matter, honestly. We just get to meet a bunch of new characters that are like Baki's homies and are really good at fighting. But what's important is in this third episode, the old white dude, white beard, not from One Piece, but the dude with the white beard, super buff guy, you remember? He, like got hung and survived it so he comes to look for dopo orochi right and like the leader of this whole gym or whatever is like 
no you don't need him i'm right here so at this point bro is playing super dirty bro he's gouging his eyes out try to use his black belt to hang him but the dude starts fighting back i'm not gonna lie he kicks him hits him a couple times but you can tell that bro this shit it's not doing anything he ends up taking a floorboard and he throws it into this dude's neck you see all this blood gushing out and at this point i'm like bro this is literally insane. This big buff dude is crazy. But right as he's about to leave, bro, somebody steps in front of him. The ponytail bandit himself. Bro looking like a fit Steven Seagal with the ponytail. Bro making all of y'all's women jealous because that's his old natural hair, bro. He don't got no horse, bro. That is not no Meg the Stallion, bro. That is straight, pure him. So this old ass white dude starts crying, weird as shit. And he like spits one of his eyebrow hairs or beard hairs or something into the dude's eyeball. Bro does a flip, bro. Everything is mad extra in Baki, by the way. Like I keep telling y'all that. Like they flip a lot, do a lot of gymnastics. So then the old dude pours some alcohol in his mouth, right? And I'm like, what is he doing? He starts pouring it out. And then he starts blowing fire on this guy, bro. Bro turned to Charizard, starts burning the gym up. I'm thinking this is regular alcohol. No, bro. Bro got some gasoline or something, bro. He just starts flamethrowing everything in here, bro. Burning the whole gym up. I'm like, bro, at this point, everybody in here is crazy. Fast forward all the bullshit. Baki runs really fast in some like 100 meter dash type joint at track. And everybody's like, Baki's built different. Nobody cares about that shit. Let's go to the hands. So there was one guy that i forgot but we gotta backtrack let's go back to the beginning real quick editor cue the rewind <laughs> so we gotta go back bro you remember the inmates i was telling you about there's one blonde guy right the blonde guy is like a russian i forgot to tell you he was at like this bottomless pit and he was at an incline to where he could not climb anything he used just his fingertips bro and his toes and he climbed out of this like endless pit to get to the top bro was built different just had to let y'all know that not only are we dealing with a buff Mr. Clean, Pablo Picasso with hands, a nigga with red hair looking like a beige flaming hot Cheeto, and a buff grandpa, but we also got Spider-Man now. This nigga is different. So fast forward to the end of the episode. Everybody that's here goes to the short Mr. Clean dwarf. You remember the guy that was talking to Baki? At this point, everybody pulls up, bro. Dope old Rochi. You remember the old mob kid from the grappler? The one that Baki fought? He's here. Baki's here. Everybody's here, bro. Everybody going crazy. So the blind guy ends up getting kidnapped by some weird niggas. They put tape over his mouth. Look like they about to do some strange thing on the hub. But we fast forward to Dopo's fight, right? Now, Dopo ball headed yo what's a lot of bald headed buff dudes here but dopo different yo you gonna see why but yo he's fighting the buff grandpa with the white beard yo he takes him like fishing wire and he like ties it around his hand bro and he cuts dopo orochi's whole hand off bro is a nub now bro bro looking like gone adult form when pito took his arm yo bro looking like shanks right now like bro is different bro has an anthill for an arm now bro so at this point i'm like Man, this dude already done lost. But little did he know that this was going to end up helping Dope Ball Rochi the entire time. So fast forward back, we go back to where this blind guy is. Remember I told you they were gagging him and all that. So at this point, bro, he escapes this whole thing. They done tried to shoot him. It ain't work. He just starts beating the shit out of everyone here. All right, so moving on to the next episode, though. A bunch of boring shit happens with Baki and his girlfriend. Nobody really gives a fuck about any of the stuff they're talking about. We're here for hands. But as they're just walking in the park, you remember Buff Mr. Clean? Oh yeah, he's behind them, menacingly, waiting. Waiting to pounce on the young prey like some weird-ass predator. So Baki senses this big, tall, nasty-ass nigga behind him. And right when he's about to attack Baki, he turns around and kisses his girl to shield her from the whole situation. And right before he gets to even attack Baki, yo, this big, strong, teenage nigga, Haniyama. I swear to God, if one more fucking car comes, oh. Anyways, big buff ass Haniyama comes, grabs this dude by his fucking face and pushes him all the way into the next scene. And at this point, I'm like, bro, this can't get any cooler, bro. And then this nigga grabs his entire outfit and rips it completely off. I'm just standing here looking at this shit happen. And I'm like, yo, did he have a tear off suit? Is this nigga a stripper or something? Like, and then we get the craziest, cleanest back tattoo I've seen ever in anime, bro. I mean, 
This back tattoo was so fire. Bro has scars and all types of shit there. But fuck all the aesthetics, bro. They get the scrapping, bro. Big Ball, Mr. Clean, and Hanayama are going at it, punching each other. He grabs Hanayama by his face and pushes him into a fucking pole. And I'm just super excited for this fight at this point. And then there's a fucking transition. And I'm just like, come on, bro. We gonna keep getting into fights and then going to a whole nother scene? So fast forward past this boring ass knife scene and we get back to Hanayama and the bald buff guy. They're kind of like mocking each other at this point. The big bald buff guy's like, look at me, boy. We got the same kind of style. And I know you might be wondering, Sensei, where are you getting that ridiculous ass accent from? But on Netflix, for some reason, I say for some reason, like I don't know based on where my region is, which is the United States, it wouldn't be in English, but it's dubbed. Okay, it's dubbed. So when I was watching through this again for this video, I had to sit through dubbed. So I mean, whatever. Anyways, he's like, boy, I got the same style as you, boy. And then they start going at it once again. Bro, these dudes are fucking insane, bro. Just the aura of them is kind of shifting the background. And I'm not going to cap. Throughout most of this fight, Hanayama is beating the fuck out of this big bald buff guy, bro. I'm going to be honest. He is punishing this dude. So the big bald buff guy at this point realizes like, bro, I can't beat this dude in straight hands. So he puts him in probably the most broken, and when I say broken, I mean one of the most cheap ass submission holds known to man the rear naked choke. And they say it doesn't matter how strong you are. No one can get out of a well executed rear naked choke. But then this cop starts talking about Hanayama and explaining how this dude's grip is crazy. Bro got the jaws of life grip. He starts talking about how he like rips stuff out of a deck of cards with his bare fingers. And I'm sitting there thinking, all right, what's going to happen next? And then it fucking happens. Hanayama grabbed his arms and started twisting that shit like he was making balloon animals, bro. And he really rips this dude's arms off the fucking sockets. You see this dude's elbow bone and everything. I mean, through the tendons, bro. That's ridiculous. Now, at this point, Hanayama's face is completely mangled. I forgot to mention this last time, but at the end of the last episode, right before Hanayama was about to finish it, bro, he says, have you had enough yet? And this man grabbed some bullets. The big ball buff guy grabbed bullets, put them in this nigga's mouth and used his own jaw to make the bullets combust. And it really ripped the both sides of this nigga's cheeks out. Bro can never drink again, bro. Like if bro tries to drink, the water is going to come out like a sprinkler system, bro. Both sides of his face is completely gone. He looks like a chuck roast. It is ridiculous. Anyways, back to the regular fight. So at this point, he done grabbed this dude's juggler and he's about to rip his fucking throat out after the big ball buff guy done stuck his middle finger through his fucking brain. And I'm just standing there like, bro, how can this fight get any crazier? And then this nigga Hanayama still ripped this nigga's throat out anyway and still stood up, bro. Brain damage and all. Guy is incredibly crazy. It's ridiculous. Anyways, fast forward, we find out this dude is super duper old and the fact that he got knocked out kind of made him regress back to this nasty bony body, bro, looking like a crip keeper for real. Like, bro, it was disgusting. That's besides the point. It doesn't fucking matter. Fast forward, we got Baki in his student form again. He's at school chilling. And you remember the dude with the red hair, bro, that looked like the beige flaming hot Cheeto? You remember I told you that dude? Yeah, that guy. The guy that survived being a fucking electrocuted? Now, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I do know this dude's name. His name is Hector Doyle, but his name's fucking stupid, bro. I don't want to call this guy Doyle, so I just want to call him Flaming Hot Cheeto for the rest of the time of this video, and that's what I'm gonna call him. Anyway, Flaming Hot done jumped in here. Him and Baki going at it. Baki done kicked this nigga in the fucking face with a desk, and I'm just like, all right, so these niggas are probably gonna scrap soon. Baki tries to run, though, because he's like, bro, I can't fight in front of the students, but guess what happens, bro? This man, Baki, done run straight into another prisoner, bro. You remember Pablo Picasso, the one that escaped the unbreakable glass, used the suction cup? Now, this dude's name is Ryaku Yanagagi, but again, I'm just gonna keep calling him Picasso for real, because he was with the art. Anyways, he got these like scythe things, and he's trying to fight Baki at this point, and it just feels like Baki ain't catching no goddamn break. Now, right when this is about to get crazy, the homie Goki shows up, and I ain't gonna lie, bro got the nicest fade out of the group. And when I say fade, I don't mean the hands, bro. Bro really got the 10 fade on the side looking nice he 
shows up all dressed up in his Japanese attire, even got the wooden click clack sandals on, and he starts scrapping with this dude Picasso, right? So they going at it, Baki's in it, they jumping each other, having a little conversation. Baki ends up falling on the ground, and then later on, some cops show up. So we start off the next episode. I think we had like episode eight or not eight. I think I don't know. It don't fucking matter. Anyways, all the homies are sitting in the little dojo. They talking to the little short principal nigga. Actually, he's not Hanayama. All of the homies is there. So yo, you remember the old bro? You remember I kept calling him white beard, buff dude, the dude that was pretending to get hung and all that. Well, his name is Dorian, but like I want to keep calling him white beard. Oh, I brought some gasoline again. I'm watching the double, so you're gonna have to excuse me with the accents. So anyway, bro, grab the lighter from him though. Hmm, right out the air, snatch it out. Like he's like, oh yeah, you remember last time you came in here, you was talking all crazy. So we hit him with a low kick. The whole gasoline falls on old head, bro. And I'm like, is he about to burn him? And I'm thinking to myself, nah, he not, because he kind of walks away. But then bro does the, is literally becoming a burn victim right in front of our eyes. So he's sitting there burning up, bro. But he still stands up. He's like, nah, I'm good for real. Like, I'm burnt up, but I'm straight. So then Kato comes in, bro. And Kato, let me explain this nigga. The amount of black Air Force energy that was resounding off of this nigga's body is insane. Bro comes straight in and then the narrator's like, look at Kato. He likes to oh, Was it Picasso? I don't really remember. I, the dude that sent the air to his girl on some weird shit, like on some Chris Chan shit. Ooh. Chris Chan, that was too far. Anyways, he cuts dude's entire ear off. And at this point, I'm like, what is going on? They're just brutally beating the fuck out of this nigga. Dopo Rochi hitting him. So at this point, Dorian done dipped off, right? Underneath the world. Why would you follow him into this dark abyss? Why would you go into this place knowing there's some strange shit going down here? Like someone needs to get Chris Hansen down here. Please have a seat. Because I know he's doing something questionable with kids. Like he's really down here on some weird shit, bro. So we go down here, you see Dorian sitting on the bed. And at this point, he got these burns all over his body. Looks like he just took a bath in V8 juice. Like he's got welts everywhere. It's disgusting. And Kato goes to hit this guy. And when I tell you he teleports through this sheet that Kato throws at him and beats these shits out of Kato. I'm like, oh my god. At this point, it's obvious that this man Kato done fucked up. This man Dorian did some crazy shit though in this next episode, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. This man Dorian takes his hands and wraps it in like petroleum jelly. And it's like Vaseline, petroleum, I don't know what it is. In my mind, when I'm looking at it, bro, I'm like, it's kind of looking fishy, bro. Like, I, I, I'm going to be honest, because it's like, bro, why both your hands slimy like that? Like, what you what you trying to get into? But anyways, he does it and covers it in glass. And I'm like, yo, he's about to beat the shit out this nigga with shards of glass. So basically, the whole premise of this Kato and Dorian fight, while this is happening, Dorian starts like singing this opera song. He's like, honey, oh, honey. He starts doing this weird opera shit. And I'm like, yo, what is going on here? So basically, let me put the narration into some real nigga shit. So the narrator gonna tell you about this long drawn out shit. Basically, Dorian has made Kato believe he's beating some weak nigga up. But in reality, he's actually fighting somebody that he's leagues below to the point where Kato snaps him back to reality and you see this man's face just slice the fuck open like it is almost disgusting how nasty this dude has gotten his ass beat he has mad fractures contusions blood loss all types of shit bro and he has this slit across his face and it is gross bro like like when i first seen it i thought that was a spot to swipe your debit card bro like i was like damn like do i go here to pay for my groceries type shit bro it looked like somebody butterflied his face open bro like his face resembled a coochie slit like it was oh man it was crazy Long story short, Dorian done punished this nigga, bro. Like, it, it's ridiculous. So they, like, bring the dude in in a stretcher and they, like, tell, you know, everybody what's going on. This man, Dorian, gets surrounded by this entire guy's dojo, though. And they take this nigga to, like, this amusement park. And I guess they're about to toy with him. And by toy with him, I mean they're about to beat the living shits out of this dude. So we go into this whole next area, right? So he's got this big ass dude chasing them around this amusement park. Now this whole time he's chasing Dorian, I'm thinking to myself, bro, he's not about to do shit to Dorian, bro. And I was right. He beats the fuck out of this big tall dude. At this point, yo, we get this like flashback, bro, to where we can like see like the path of Kayo and all this bullshit, bro. Nobody cares about flashbacks. We here for the hands, bro. Fast forward past all the flashback when we go into the next episode. Fuck all that. So Dopo Orochi pops up, bro. And you remember Dopo Orochi. Big, 
tall, buff guy. It's a bunch of big, bald, tough guys, bro. It's a lot of them. But this dude is the one that had the nub. You remember he cut his whole arm off and he had a stump? He looked like Mega Man. Like he got this big ass cannon for an arm now, but it's really like a round nub. Like, it looked like he got Homer Simpson's head on his arm. Like it's, it's kind of gross. But anyways, he starts fighting this dude, Dorian. Now at this point, I'm like, bro, how is he going to win? But little does Dorian know that he's actually helped this guy Dopo Orochi out because the problem with Dopo Orochi is that like his fist hold him back but he gave this dude a nub he gave this dude a hard flesh substance pulse that was crazy but he basically gave him a surface to infinitely hit something with like he has nothing holding him back at this point so at this point bro he's done beat the shit out of dorian bro like he beat this nigga dorian up so much that dorian thinks that he's a child now he beat this nigga into adolescence bro he beat this nigga so much that he starts asking for candy bro this nigga dorian thinks that he's in willy wonka's the chocolate factory right now he's asking for lollipops and shit he don't beat the fuck out of this nigga to the point where he's regressed he's an old ass man with the mind of a 12 year old bro he's on neverland ranch right now with michael jackson like now like he's like bro this dude is a child he's like oh i want some candy big buff nasty kid ass nigga bro it's ridiculous but now we done came to the last episode of part one of season one and oh i can't wait to get the part two of season two but that's for a whole nother video baby but this one is about mr oliver now mr oliver i just have to talk about this guy for a minute this dude is a fucking monster a monstrosity of a man i done seen a lot of a man before pause but this dude is of a different caliber mr oliver is so swole a man tried to stab him with a spear and his pectoral muscles stopped it not only did it stop it but it bent the blade when we get to part two y'all are going to see an entirely different world out of this nigga mr oliver it is almost insane how crazy that this shit gets bro all i gotta say is look forward to the next part because oh man there's so 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 much that we're gonna see in this next part and by so so much i mean there's a scene where this man Baki literally pisses on a nigga, bro. Yeah, he, he, he pees on a nigga, bro. This next part is crazy, bro. Just tune into this shit, bro. Make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications or you a bitch ass nigga. Make sure you tune into the hood reviews because, bro, we coming strong. Baki parts. We coming with a Yu Yu Hakusho one at some point. It might already be out before you even see this, bro. Like, that's how in the future I am, how advanced I am with this shit, bro. But make sure that you tune into the hood reviews and please stay tuned for more baki parts oh this is gonna be fucking gas yo subscribe or you a bitch nigga bye